that one too. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, to be honest with you, like I feel like my videos that I did with Lady Leisha, I know it was a long time ago, but there was just a, a certain energy and and passion that I, that we had behind that, mm. that the synergy would just worked, mm. and I feel like that's kind of set the precedence for the video she's gone on to do in her career. Like if you go back and watch the stuff we done together, I feel like we kind of collectively, we invented a certain style of music videos. And um, I was like running here, there and everywhere with her to create this look. And it was all vibes, you know what I'm saying? Like there was not, it wasn't a money thing. I didn't get paid. Um, it was just like two creative people coming together and like, building and doing some sick stuff, do you know what I mean? So I think that era of, of my career was was really good. I really enjoyed it. Um, but in terms of my all-time favourite, I don't know, man, that's a hard question, bro. I can't even think of the videos I've done in the past year. <laughs> um, but I, I like doing stuff with substance. That's what, when I, was, when I spoke earlier on about like having direction, I want to do things that mean something. Mm. Like when you watch some of your favorite videos and what you listen to some of your favorite songs, it means something to you because it you related to something in there at that time at that point in time. Do you know what I mean? So, like doing the drill videos and the rap videos and some of the rap videos is cool, but I like stuff with a story. Like my, I feel like my trajectory is film and like that's what I want to do. And with my wife, she's a writer. We've been doing a lot of like um, short films. But I'm like gearing up for my feature, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I really want to make it something that has substance and it means something to people so people can relate to it rather than all the wishy-washy gang-related stuff yeah. that comes out, do you know what I mean? So um, so this year we filmed a story about a guy who, another suicide theme, I'm good guys, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just, it's, it's touch, it was touching on like mental health in men and how men don't really speak on about their emotion, they don't really express, and some people just hold things like inside until it's too late. Do you know what I mean? We see all the time men, men killing, killing themselves. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I really want to shed awareness on that, and so that's kind of the direction I'm going, going, going down, like shedding light on important yeah. subjects. And you mentioned working with your wife a few times, and so how do you look at work-life balance? Because we hear this all the time, right? Yeah. And do you think work-life balance is important or how do you manage it if you believe it exists or do you feel that it's just something that people just label and yeah no it's so important man like i think i think life in itself is a balancing act you have to try and balance your family life with your job with your health you know what i mean like you literally have to make sure that you're holding all these plates up you know what i mean um for me like last year was very busy for me. I was traveling a lot. I was doing a lot of deep camera work, like carrying heavy cameras for like 16 hours. And where I've been doing that for such a long time, I started to realize that my body was telling me that, okay, you can't handle that anymore. Do you know what I mean? So you have to make lifestyle changes. Not to go into it too much, but I was in hospital four times last year because um, of my heart. So I got... Um, I had to do loads of tests because my heart, I keep getting um, AF, which is atrial fibrillation. Okay. And it just, it's like something to do with the electrical pulses in your heart. So your heart doesn't beat normally. So there were times where I'd be sitting down and my heart's staying like 150. Yeah, so um, I got discharged at the end of last year saying it was down to stress. So yeah, like that was a trigger for me to, okay, slow down. Um, can't kill yourself over this, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah, you have to make money, but that shouldn't be the end goal, do you know what I mean? Like, you have to, I want to see my my children grow up and mm. things like that, do you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, and even one of, uh, like, a legendary DP and director in our field called Luke Biggins passed last year. He's done, literally shot everyone in the UK, but he's a tank, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or he was a tank. Yeah. Um, and he's such a nice guy and he just worked so hard and ended up dying last last year, do you know what I mean? From, I, I don't, I don't want to disclose his personal yeah. information, but yeah, just things like that, like a harsh reminder that, yeah, you need to slow down and just, you know what I mean, care about your health and things like that. So yeah, this year, I think I've done about six jobs in total, man. 
I've been traveling, spending time with my family. Just the balance, you know what I mean? Like less is more sometimes. Yeah, I agree. And, <laughs> and how did you think it works with you and your wife working together too? I mean, she, she, so she like is from Liverpool. Mm. She moved down to London like 2013 to pursue her acting career. Mm. So we met on set and um, we got together and like, she started to come on set with me and help me out. She used to work in the body shop for like 18 years. So um, she's been introduced to this world of like working for yourself through me. Mm. And um, it's, been a, it's been a learning journey. I think now we're at a place that, that's so beautiful and I'm so blessed to be able to be in my industry and be in my career with someone who just gets it. Because as you probably know, it's very difficult to explain to your to your partner, like long days, got loads of models on set, like, do you know what I mean? I don't need to explain certain things that I would have had to if I was with someone who wasn't from the industry, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So um, yeah, man, she's definitely an addition to everything that I'm doing. Um, and I can't ask for any more, bro. Like, That's good. Yeah, like, I, like there were a few hiccups that are in, along the way, but do you know what I mean? They're all learning, it's all learning, isn't it? No, nah, it's good. But yeah, uh, man, it's beautiful. Yeah, because I've seen on your Insta and stuff that you work together, and I think yeah, it's cool yeah. that, you know, and again, I suppose that's that's part of balance too, right? Yeah, no, um, I don't know where I'd be without it, man. That's the truth. Cool. So with the, um, you mentioned the industry then. If if someone, random person said, look, what's it like working in the industry? Like, you're directly in it, working with people that's in it. And I would say people that, you know, are very well known too. Like what, what's your like overall opinion on the industry as a whole? Because everybody hears all crazy stuff about it. <laughs> is this for someone who's once again in the industry? I think if you want to get in the industry, you have to, you have to be sure of who you are as a person. You have to be sure of what you kind of stand for, what you won't stand for, because this is a place that changes people. Um, and people lose themselves in this in this industry very quickly as well. Um, I feel like I've been in, I've been at that point where I felt like I might have lost my where like what matters to me. Do you get what I'm saying? And my my ethics, if you want to call it that, my morals. Um, Cause you get gas, man. Yeah. You are coming in and you start going to shows, meeting people yeah. in hotels. Like people want to do anything for like. So for me, like obviously people don't. I'm not saying that was me. Yeah. I'm just saying that for instance, if you're a camera guy or videographer or whatever it is, and you start rolling with someone who's big, an artist who's big, like you can you can very easily forget that it's not you. <laughs> it's yeah, the artist. Yeah, yeah. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll just say like, just be sure of who you are. Know what you what you want from the industry. Mm. Do you know what I mean? What you want from this space? Because if you don't, like, you literally just be blown in the wind. Mm. Go a whole ten years, and you're like, right, what have I really accomplished? Mm. Who am I? Do you know what I mean? And some people end up getting depressed, and because they might be rolling with some big artist for I don't know five years. Maybe the artist is not so big anymore. Now they're lost. They don't know how to make money. Do you know what I mean? So. Yeah, just like network as well. Mm. Speak to people, be nice. All these like things that people yeah. don't really tell you like and just have your way about you, man. Open your eyes, watch watch out for people cuz not everyone has got your 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 best interests. There's a lot of finesses. People will finesse you wherever they can. Um so yeah. And and that's probably going to lead on to this. So if you as an artist coming into the industry now, regardless whether you're young or whatever, um would you say to try and keep everything in house in regards to your music or do you still feel that people should be looking at certain labels and other people to take them to the next level the reason why i ask is i've seen what um like Cincy has done with some and i think it's sick what he's done to people put them on those platforms i've seen he's working with, i think clavish now and and for me like clavish is someone that that would need that you know i feel like someone to take him and be like look this is your direction. Yeah. Do you, what do you feel? Do you feel like there's people like that, that that you need in the industry, or do people that directly in labels, or just do it yourself? I think you need to find who you, who your energy like. You find your tribe, basically, someone that understands you as an artist. I think that's so important because I think you get into the industry, you maybe make one good song, and then you get all these people flocking towards you, trying to chuck money at you. 
and they're trying to make you into something that you're not you're you're not really um so yeah it's definitely important for to to have there, there are a few good hired people in the industry and that really want to like push the culture and they're invested in like quality mm. as opposed to like numbers do you get what i'm saying um so yeah get someone who will ride with you and mm. who and I, I don't feel i don't feel like I don't think of anything because no man's an island. I don't think of anything you should try and do it yourself, Definitely. completely. Yeah. I think there's more. You put more stock into getting the right people around you. Do you get what I mean? Like getting the right producer, someone who understands your sound, and you work well together in the studio. And rather than just like trying to go and spend hours and learning, I don't know, logic by yourself or whatever. Obviously, there's people that do that and they have success with that. But I'm just saying, like, have the right people around you, innit? Yeah. And you and and vibes don't lie. You get me? You can tell when someone wants your best interest. Yeah. Most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time. Yeah, I agree. So is, it, so is there anyone in particular that you like? You'd like to work with at some point, uh, artist-wise. I feel like it was always Fifty Cent for a long time, but yeah. I, I feel like that window's <laughs> closing, yeah. man. He doesn't do music. Like be, that. Yeah, the ship's But maybe I can back up with him on a film level. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah, he's ne really. Next, but yeah, next power. power yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he's done so many great shows, man. He's done um, the BMF series. I don't know if you've seen that. I haven't seen the whole series. Oh, uh, bro. Series, it's, yeah. it's amazing from a cinematography perspective as well. Yeah. Like, I even like DM'd the, the DP and I was like, bro, like, your work is crazy. I can't remember his last name, but his first name's Tim. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, like 50 Cent was one of them. Um, I'd love to work with Jay-Z because that's my, I just admire everything that he's done and built from the ground up, do you know what I mean? What he stands for on the business, on the business like level as well. Um, in the UK, probably this rascal, you know? Yeah. Yeah, just for the bounce, bro. Yeah, yeah. I feel like, I was speaking to my sister that, the other day and she was like, what was one of the key things that, was pivotal in, was instrumental in where you, like, putting you where you are now. And it's because I started music. Mm. If I didn't start music, I wouldn't have got into videos and I wouldn't have made a career out of shooting videos, you know what I mean? And the reason why I started music was because of Dizzy, yeah. do you feel me? So, um, yeah, man, I feel like I would, I would love to do something with him. Yeah, yeah, Dizzy's sick. And with the, um, so there's a lot of upcoming artists now and because of social media, like YouTube, the YouTube era was still there, but the YouTube like hood video era, like yeah. people popped up from everywhere. There's, there's so many people, but now, because of like TikTok and everything, yeah. there's just like, and SoundCloud, that, that those artists have come to TikTok, it's, it's gone crazy. Is there anyone in particular that you're seeing in the industry now yeah. that you feel has got the potential to, to take it. So there's a lot, but there's anyone in particular that you're listening to or you know that you feel is ready to take it to the next level? What, a young artist from the UK? Hmm. Um, there's a few There's a few artists that I work with that I really believe in and I feel like they just need the right, they just need the right song or right opportunity for people to hear them out. Like, AO Beats is someone that I work with very closely. Um, he's he I, I think he's a genius man when it comes to music. Like he understands how to bring the best out of people in terms of like as a producer, but also as an artist. Like on the lyric, on the lyrical level, he's like crazy, and the way he puts songs together is just like I actually admire his work. Um, another person is Shocker. Uh, he I, I like what he stands for. I like that he's got substance, and he he just needs the right people to hear him, do you get what I'm saying? Because we're like, everything's so numbers driven right now. We tend to overlook talent um, and we go more towards like just viral, viral content, do you get what I mean? Um, and I just feel like, yeah, you've got substance, but you also need to understand where we are right now in terms of the industry we're in and how things blow up and, how you get those numbers. I think artists definitely need to pay attention to that, regardless of what type of artist you are, um, because you deserve to be heard as well. And why can someone with a phone go viral on TikTok, but you can't, do you know what I mean? Like, So yeah, um, there's de I know there's definitely loads I'm missing yeah, yeah. out, but just like off the top of my head, 
I know those those people have the potential to be big. Um, I like I like what Central C's doing as well. I like uh, I, I'm I'm good friends with his manager YB's. Great at marketing too. Like yeah, exactly. Same. Yeah, so they're, they're he's they them two are doing they're doing sick bits for the UK. So I'm surprised if AO beats right because his sound. He was the, his people. The people have sort of really capitalized on the sound he was using years ago. Like he and it wasn't like he was doing anything wrong. Cause I remember the first videos used to do with him in Dubai. Mm. Like he was, he had sick videos. Like obviously he was doing them. Really? His sound was good. Yeah. Everything that he was doing was, it felt like that's what the industry wanted. Yeah. So I'm surprised that that had, like he really hasn't yeah. like blown because yeah. I know man, I mean, I think for him, there's this, um, there's this balancing act of producer and artist. Mm. And because he's such a sick producer, right? a lot of people want his beats, you know what I mean? Right. But what he really wants to do, I don't want to speak for him, but mm. what he, what I know he really wants to do is be an artist. Yeah, That's his like end goal, do you feel me? Um, so I feel like he's been distracted so much by producing and everybody wanting to be a producer that he hasn't really had the right chance and given the r himself a right opportunity to be an artist until recently. Um, so yeah, we've like he's doing a lot of stuff with Wes Nelson, um, <clears throat> and a lot of artists as well. You feel me? So I think it's only a matter of time for Ayo, man. Yeah. I think it, I think definitely th that tune will come yeah. that people really connect with, and yeah. Yeah, I agree. So you mentioned the ones that you may you think are the potential. In your opinion, just from the outsider looking in, people that are hot right now, who do you think is next to blow? In your opinion? Oh, that's mad. Um, I, I don't, I don't really get time to listen to music, you know. <laughs> yeah, like not as much as I would love to. Um, who am I, who do I, who do I like right now? I really like SL. Mm. I like his sound. I like his like what he speaks about. I like his delivery. I think it's different, even though he does drill. I think it's. It's it's quirky and you know what I mean like it can cross over. Um, it's a tough one, bro. I can't okay, lie. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. We'll leave that for next. Yeah, yeah. We'll leave that for <laughs> next time, bro. So, um, probably the last one to wrap up. Really, um, these days, sort of, it, it was always been there. Like back in the day of like Peck and Brixton, the whole like beef videos and stuff. Yeah. But it feels like because of TikTok and a lot of short form content we're seeing these like one-liners coming out of songs and yeah. there's a lot of like beef now, the whole op stuff and whatever, yeah. back and forth, postcode stuff. It's really come to light. Like, social media's played a big part. Yeah. Even though it's always been there, it's like now it's like everyone's talking about it. Yeah. Has that like played any part in you either agreeing or not agreeing to work or have you ever got tied up in it because of a relationship you have in the industry or yeah, has that stopped anything? Uh, not really, you know, because I haven't really been super affiliated with any artists like that. Do you get what I mean? To the point where it's reflecting on me. Do you get me? I don't think I've been that. My journey hasn't really taken me. I haven't stuck to one artist. Mm -hmm. um, so I haven't really had any issues in that re in that respect. But, like, I've been robbed. Mm -hmm. I've been... I've been at in sticky situations. I was shooting a David Doe video the other day. Um and while we're shooting a couple of guys ran not too not too far from here actually. Yeah, a couple of guys ran up ran up on some of my crew and tried to take our kit, you know what I mean? So yeah, like you have to you have to know how to move in it. You have to keep your eyes open at all times. Like it's very easy to get comfortable and and stop paying attention to some of the signs, you feel me? Um, and I just thank God that nothing serious has happened so far, do you feel me? But in regards to affiliations and beefs, and I've, I haven't really been involved in that. And I think because cause I'm not from London as well, that's helped. Mm. I didn't grow up with mm. in any particular postcode or, yeah. do you get what I mean? I feel like if I was from, I don't know, East or South, for instance, and I was working with a couple of men from North and they had issues, mm. that might have yeah. been a problem. Um, but for me, where I've, I'm kind of like an outsider coming in, I haven't really like had those type of issues. 
Um, and I'm just cool. I'm cool with everyone, man. I treat everyone with respect, and that's why I want I, I want in return. Do you feel me? And like you mentioned, a few of the ish, the situations you've you've been through. I remember them hood videos people used to shoot back in the day. Some of those cameramen that yeah. like they outsource it to <laughs> some of the places they used to send them. I hear, I've heard so many stories yeah. of cameramen going to certain places and and coming out without the camera. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's, a, it's 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 sad. It's sad because like. You're just trying to make money to feed yourself, do you know what I mean? Uh, but it's all it's all opportunist, isn't it? Like the person who robbed me, like we're cool now, innit? Yeah. I didn't I didn't know him at the time. Yeah. Um but it happened. I I got my camera back. It, it's it's a mad story, innit? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I knew his manager, but his manager didn't know that that happened. Yeah. I didn't know that I was his manager. And a year later, we ended up speaking. He, he apologised. He's like, oh, bro, I'm sorry that like this happened, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. But you know what I mean? That's how life goes. You live, you learn, um, and you move on. You feel me? I agree. Yeah. So, last one. Um, media works. Like, yeah. What What's the goal? You mentioned about t- making sure you're enjoying life while you're growing. Yeah. Um, Work life balance. Yeah. Like how far do you want to take it? And and you mentioned a few times about doing short film yeah. more and other and like long form film. Yeah. Is that what you want to move into and stay away from the music? Or what, what's, the, what's the long-term plan for you and media work? Yeah, so for me, um, for me personally, I definitely still want to do, like, be involved in music mm. to some capacity, mm. um, whether it's a, a managerial level or A&R or exec producing, do you know what I mean? I definitely want to be involved. Like, I used to manage Miss Banks for, like, four years. Mm. Um so I think my journey will definitely take me there. Um, in terms of media works, we want to really, like, when we, when I don't know if you jumped on a clubhouse craze. Nah, not really, nah. Oh, uh, yeah, clubhouse is crazy. Yeah, you <laughs> missed it, man. Um, so when clubhouse first, like, started getting big in the UK, I jumped on and mm. I made a lot of connects. And one theme is that people really want information and they really want... Um, an avenue into the scene and into the industry. Some people don't have a clue how to even start. Okay, yeah, so like hopefully early January next year, I want to kind of, myself and Addy want to start a mentorship scheme to help people like maneuver in the industry, um, try and like pick what they, what kind of field they want to go into, whether it's camera work, producing, um, art, direction the creative side writing treatments writing scripts um but yeah because i find a lot of people don't really know what they want to do they just know that they want to like get into the into the film industry but they don't know what like aspects so because like subconsciously and indirectly we've been helping a lot of people like bringing them on set um teaching them about certain things like there's a few people that I've taught how to like use a camera, framing, lighting, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, yeah, I'm really excited about, really excited about. I don't want to say giving back, but kind of helping people to kind of maneuver in this space. Um, so yeah, that's one of the key things and key directions which we're going to be taking. And in regards to like what we want to do, we want to do more short and long form content like we're doing a lot of stuff with Ray and Nephew at the moment a lot of documentaries um and I'm really enjoying that because I don't think I'd ever like I enjoy watching doc- documentaries but I don't think I'd enjoy like creating it yeah. um so yeah that's something that I've, I've realized that I really love like hearing people's stories and getting a different perspective on things you know what I mean um but yeah films is what I I, I just want to I want to direct films man yeah. I want to tell certain stories uh, especially being African and being born in African in, in Nigeria and moving here mm. like there's a certain perspective and I don't really see that perspective being told mm. in cinema yeah. as well in the in the UK or just worldwide like every time you think of like Africans you always think about the stereotypical accent and yeah. certain things and there's so much more to it you know what I mean so much more to the experience so yeah, I definitely want to like connect with people in that way because there's a lot of people that will relate to that. Yeah, I agree. And I think that what you mentioned on the mentorship side too is, you know, when you think of the amount of people that are trying to get involved in the industry yeah. and like you said, they literally, they just don't know where to start. Yeah, and even if like I said, I want to be involved in film. Okay, what well, part of film? Like, wait, what, what's the niche? I, I, yeah. I definitely feel that that's like definitely missing because mm. You sort of have to keep, you learn lessons by 
through mistakes usually. Exactly, by or, doing, bro. Yeah, yeah. Or, or like networking with people and then Absolutely. they say, stay away from this person or don't do Absolutely, that. Absolutely, yeah. Which, if you had an actual like guide where it's like, look, if you just do it this way, you can yeah. avoid a lot of the mistakes. Absolutely, man. Um, there's a there's a kid that I, I don't even know how I came across him. I think I saw his work on Instagram. Um, and he's like, I don't even know, I think he's from, he's from out of London somewhere. And um, I got speaking to him and he was just telling me about his area, how there's like lack of opportunities, blah, blah, blah. And I just sent him an iMac oh. on a random one. I sent him an iMac, um, had his mum and dad ringing me like, <laughs> what's going on here? Like, <laughs> yeah. like, th what, why are you doing this? <laughs> like, what do you want from our son? Yeah. I was like, bro, listen, like, I see potential in him and I'll, and I'll, he just needs the right tools in it. Do you mm. know what I mean? Um, and now he's doing crazy things. Like he done the Russ, Russ and Russ and the body. He edited yeah, that. What? Yeah, done all the special effects for that. Oh. Like he's done crazy videos. So oh, that's it. And now that's like my little young G. Do you feel yeah. me? His name's Callum. Big up Callum. So um, yeah, man. And that's another thing as well. Like just sometimes you follow your heart and and yeah. and do things that your brain will tell you not to do. Do you get me? That that Mac cost me like twelve hundred. That's yeah. what I was using at the time. Just, yeah. I just gave it to him. Didn't I never met the kid in my life? Probably had like one conversation with him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, man, that's sick. And I look at him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's. So um, yeah, bro. I just I think yeah, just reach out to people. That's very important. Yeah. Network. Your network is your network. Yeah, there's a lot of talent out there, and and yeah. talent. Yeah. But look, mate, I really appreciate you coming down. Yeah, absolutely. Doing wicked to catch up, even if it is on the podcast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But yeah, man, it's, it's good to see good. what you're doing, and and yeah, yeah definitely going to be following the journey, and hope to Thank have you, you back. Likewise, my good luck, good luck with the pod. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I hope. I wish you all the success, and yeah, we'll link up soon. Appreciate it.